Okay, I'd like to review types and information items and access structures, and then I'd like to relate them to XML to see how types and access structures and uh, items are worked with in an XML environment. First of all, let me be very clear that types and items and access structures have nothing to do per se with XML. I mean, yeah, with XML. We just use XML as a way of representing those, a way of modeling them and a way of representing them. Hopefully, by this point, that's a pretty clear concept to you. But let me try to dive to the essence of each kind of the of each of those three things. The essence of a type is value. What kind of information is valuable enough that I would put the effort into modeling it and authoring it and making sure that it's all well meta tagged? What kind of information is important enough? And so I want you to put that at the center of your ideas about how a type is created. It's the information that's valuable enough to be worth the effort. And believe me, it's a lot of effort. There's times when you spend hours and hours on a single item. So it better be worth something. It better be valuable. The essence of types is a kind of information that's valuable enough. Now, valuable enough to whom? To two kinds of people. Valuable enough to your organization that it will get something out of the delivery of this information. It'll get something in return for delivering that information. And valuable enough to some kind of user, some audience member, that they would take the time to look for that information. And when they consume that information, they will find some particular value in having consumed it. Okay, that's one side of the type equation. The other side of the type equation is an optimal model. The essence of information types is creating the optimal model, the model that is neither too specific nor too general to represent that information so that it delivers, it delivers value to the organization, delivers value to the user. That's the essence of types. Information that's valuable enough to be, for, valuable enough that you'll put the effort into it, and also information that's been modeled in a way that's optimum. Optimum so that you don't have to spend too much time uh, creating that kind of information and so that it'll deliver the value that's necessary to the users and deliver the value that's necessary to the organization. So that's the essence of types. The essence of items. Items are there to communicate the value. The essence of items is it's a chunk of content. It's a chunk of information. It's something that someone will consume. And having consumed it, they ought to realize the value that it was meant to, meant to give them. Having realized that value, they should then in some way return value to the organization that provided that information to them. That's the basic idea. Items. Items are all about the delivery of value, the delivery of some form of, of, of information-based value to a user. Now, there's another thing about um, items, and that goes along with the, now these two distinctions really go along with the two distinctions that I made in, um, in types. Value and optimal model. Value, the information item delivers the value that the information type is seeking to deliver. Second, the information item has to be authorable. It has to be creatable. You can have an information item that's so complex that no one would ever be able to create them or that you can't create them at the rate that you need to in order to make your system work or that is too sophisticated and the people who are supposed to author it never can figure out how to author it because the model is too complex. So there's an optimum model in the type and that maps in the, in the uh, there's an optimum model in the type and that maps in the information item to not, not so much that it's unauthorable. On the other hand, not so little that it doesn't deliver the value. Essence of types, value and optimization. Essence of items boils down to the same communication of the value that the item is, tr is trying to convey. And B, um, uh, optimization of the tagging in the item so that it can deliver the value that it's supposed to deliver. Okay, the essence of access structures. The essence of access structures, I think, is, is really a kind of an interesting concept. To my mind, the essence of an access structure is how can I supply a little bit of information that allows a user to find their way to a lot of information. So take a title, for example. A title is a little bit of information. That little bit of information, upon reading it and clicking it, obviously, because we're going to put it in an index of titles, that's what makes it an access structure, leads you to a very large amount of information. Take a hierarchy, for example. The hierarchy is a very little bit of information. In a thousand page book, you can have a hierarchy covering the entire book that's only a page or two. That's a page or two of information that, if it works properly, is lead, going to lead you to thousands of pages of information. 
The essence of an access structure is supplying a little piece of information, something that is reminiscent of the big piece of information, and using that to allow users to find their way to that bigger piece of information. In the case of a sequence, the little piece of information is simply the idea of this is next. This is next leads you on to the, uh, to the next piece of information. In the case of a cross-reference, the little piece of information may be the name on the link. It may be the hot text, for example, on a web page link. And that's going to lead you, that's going to give you enough of a clue to lead you in the right direction. Okay, so we have the essence of types, value and optimization. That really maps to the essence of items, which are also about value and optimization. And the essence of access structures, which is supplying a small amount of information to get the user to a larger amount of information so that you can supply that information in a compressed space so the user can scan it quickly, so the user can take in a lot of information very quickly and only when they want to get to the payload, the larger amount of information, then they move from the access structure into the item. Okay, so now let's talk about how XML figures in this. So that was by way of a different angle, sort of a review about items, access structures, and types. Now let's talk about XML. Probably you can guess already how these things map together. The XML schema is a rules file. Rules for what? Rules for how to model the information. Modeling the information type as well as modeling the access structures. The information type is modeled with some element and that element will have an ID and a title. You'll really very, very rarely find an, uh, an information type that doesn't have an ID and a title. And then on from there, depending on what kind of item it is, it will have other sorts of elements and attributes that define the parts and pieces, the elements as we call them, of the information type. So schemas define information types. If you're looking for the definition of an information type, look in the schema. Instances convey the items. The items of information are in the instance. The actual content is in the instance. The rules aren't in the instance. The information type isn't in the instance, except by implication. You can, you can uh, reverse engineer your way to a schema from an instance. In that way, you're reverse engineering your way to the rules, but the rules themselves really are contained in the schema. The instance contains the information items. In addition, the, in, the instance contains the place where the information items are all related together using access structures. And if it's in any access structure, there's nothing additional necessary in the schema, excuse me, in the instance, than just all the information items in order to instantiate the access structure. If it's an Audi, you'll find additional tags, additional elements inside the instance that establish the, the, the information, that establish the access structure and link the access structure back to the items. So for example, you might have an Audi index inside of, a, um, inside of an instance, in which case you'd find some section, some part, some element of the instance that contains the index, and then it would contain each index entry and a, and a ref ID, a relationship, a relation back to the ID of the items that are indexed. Similarly, with a table of contents or a, um, or a hierarchy, you'd have a section of the instance that contains the hierarchy, and then each node of the hierarchy can be linked to items that are in the instance by the use, again, of ref IDs. Okay, so those ref IDs are the, are the telltale sign of an Audi access structure. If it's an Audi access structure, that means it's outside the information items, but that doesn't mean it has to be outside the instance. It can just be in another part of the instance, away from the items. Okay, that takes us to transforms. What are transforms? Well, you can see that the information is adequately represented both the access structures, the items, and the types are adequately represented just with the schema in an instance. The problem with the schema in the instance is there's no way to get it out and viewable in a way that users can relate to. You can't just give somebody a schema in an instance and say, here, here's your information. You have to give it to them in a way that's end user friendly, that's useful for them. And that's where the transforms come in. The transforms take the access structures and they turn them into some form of navigation. The, uh, the, the transforms take the information items and render them in a way that is useful to the user, say on a web page or in a PDF file or wherever else you want your transforms to take them. Okay, so we've gotten to the essence of information types, items, and access structures from an ab abstract standpoint. And then we've gotten to how those three concepts are instantiated inside of an XML scenario using transforms, schemas, and instances. The schema contains the rules, 
Those are the rules of the information types and the rules of how the access structures are created and the instance houses the access structures, houses the items of information. And finally, the transform allows that structure to be rendered in a way that's end user friendly.